All right, this graph represents some experimental data. It's giving us two different quantities. One is the surface area of a snow shovel's blade, and this quantity is given in 100 square centimeters. So, for example, if I read the value 2 here from my x axis, then this actually stands for 200 centimeters squared. Then goes on to tell us about another thing which is there on the graph, which is time of fatigue. And this has been described as the minimum number of hours of snow shoveling until a healthy adult feels too fatigued to continue. What does minimum here mean? Let's just take an example to understand this. Suppose I take this data point. Now, read the x value here. The value on the x axis is 8 and the corresponding value on the y axis is this. It's 0 0.3. So how we interpret this is that if somebody uses this shovel with surface area of 800 centimeters squared, then the minimum number of hours until a healthy adult feels too tired is 0 0.3, which means a minimum of this much duration a healthy adult can use this shovel for. After that, they will start being tired. Now, the line is also given here, which is called the trend line, and that really shows how generally this comes down. What that means is as the surface area of your shovel blade increases, as the blade itself, you know, gets bigger and bigger, it becomes harder to lift it. And so the number of hours in which people would get tired, that hours, those come down, you get tired sooner, basically. So that's the whole idea. Now, let's see what is the question asking for this. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition, and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Here, so there are actually two uh, statements that we have to fill. We have choices to fill those blanks for, and this is the first one. So what does it say? It talks about the data point for which distance to the trend line is the greatest. And then it asks a question about this data point, that this data point particularly has what surface area of the shovel blade. So basically, surface area, I know I'm going to read that on the x-axis, but I will be able to read it after I identify which data point this is. So which one is the farthest from the trend line? If I come back here, Actually, it is the one that I took, for example. All of the others you see are really close to the trend line. Even this one is pretty close. The farthest point is this one that we took as example. And for this one, I can see the x value is 8. Do not make the mistake of just marking 8 as your answer. It's 800 because that's your unit. Anyway, they did not even trap you. They were sweet not to keep that as a choice. So the correct answer here is choice C. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Now look at the second statement, the second question asked on this. This is according to the trend line. That means this time to answer this question, you will uh, rely on that straight line which was given. According to the trend line, each 0.1 hour decrease in time to fatigue corresponds to an increase in shovel blade surface area that is approximately dash. That means you're saying that whenever this time to fatigue goes down by 0.1 hour, correspondingly, how much does this surface area increase? Because that is in centimeters squared. Obviously, all of your choices here also had to be in centimeters squared. That's why it says this is dash centimeters squared. So I have to read that line which I had. And what do I need to find on this? Just let's already understand what I want to read. Think about it. Say there's this one point and this is another point. And say between these two, the time has dropped by point 0.1. 
So I really want to see that as time has dropped by 0.1, accordingly, how much has been the increase in surface area? Because that is what I have on the x-axis, right? The y-axis gives me the time. So essentially, I will just try to read two points on this line where the difference between the time is 0.1. And I will just see what is the difference between their x values, the surface areas. So let's go with this understanding to the graph here. Now I want to read a 0.1 drop, but it might be a little tricky because it's a, you know, it's pretty, uh, the values are pretty small. We can still try it. This is at 1.6. And if I try the 1.5, which is just one point lower, it's somewhere here close to four. It doesn't feel very neat. You know, I'm, I'm approximating. I can't be very clean. That's why it's usually easier if you take grid points, you know, points that are on the line. So say I take this one and I take this one. Then, Yes, I know as a result, I have reduced this by 0.2. And if this is 0.2, how much is the increase in surface area? That is 2. Read this value here. This much is 2. While the next one here is 6. So from this, what I see is that when time went down by 0.2, this surface area increased by 4. That's how much I am going from 2 to 6, right? So if this is what I get for a 0.2 reduction in time, SA went up by 4. Correspondingly, you can find it for 0.1 also, no? just maintain the same proportion. So this then, if it's if the decrease is 0.1 in time, then surface area will be 2 more, 2 units more on the x-axis. But of course, I know I'm reading the values in 100 square centimeters. So this one here is 200 square centimeters. So when I come back here, I see choice C as the correct answer. That's it. So let's understand how we solve this question first by clearly understanding everything that was given here. We even took an example to make sure we get it. This was where we really owned the data set. Then when we went into the first statement, it simply talked about the farthest data point. So we just needed to visualize which one that was. And then our understanding of how to read this was required. That's all that was needed. When we went into the second question, though, it talked about a specific decrease. It said, what if time decreases by 0.1, what happens to surface area? In this stage, before we even went into the data, we determined our approach here. We already knew what kind of information we wanted. We wanted to see how much the X value increased as Y value went down by 0.1. Then, even after we did come into the data, we were smart about how to make inferences from it. We chose values that were easier to read so that we're more efficient in our work. Once we got it for 0.2 degrees, we could very easily scale it down to 0.1. So you saw three things. Own the data set. Understand the question. Determine your approach before you come to data. And even after you do come to data, be smart about how you use it. Be efficient. That's it.